Greetings, Japan fans. Today's show, we're going to look at remote work. Maishu, arigatou gozaimasu, and welcome back to the 10th year of the Leadership Japan series. And I'm your host in Tokyo, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Carnegie, Tokyo franchise owner, president of Dale Carnegie Tokyo Training, and the three-time best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery, and my new book, Stop Wasting Money on Training in Japanese, Training de Okane o Muda ni Suru no wa Yamimasho, is now available on Amazon. This podcast brings insights, examples, and experience about leading in Japan, and trust me, it is different here. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn, who, unlike many other podcast hosts, have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on iTunes. Monday is the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Tuesday is the Presentations Japan series. Every second Tuesday, the Business Tatsujin no Oshie Show. Wednesday is the Sales Japan series. Thursday is the Leadership Japan series. And every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast Show. Friday is the Japan Business Mastery Show. And Saturday is Japan's top business interviews. Before we get going, today's handy Japanese phrase is remember, these are all informal, very informal statements. Ja, soro soro. Ja, soro soro. This is for when it's time to leave. Maybe it's time to leave the restaurant, time to go home, whatever it might be. Time to go. When you're time to go, you're just suggesting, okay, it's time to go. You just say, ja, soro soro. Ja, soro soro. Ja, soro soro. Yep, time to go. Okay, let's get going. Time to leave. Ja, soro soro. Ja, soro soro. Ja, soro soro. This is episode number. 484, and today we're talking about leading remote work going forward. Some company policies towards remote work are let a hundred flowers bloom, a thousand schools contend. Others are saying, get back in the office right now or leave. This issue is certainly contentious, and there seems to be a preference for Japanese leaders to have their staff under their direct gaze. What is driving that desire? Is it that the bosses can't manage a remote workforce? Is it that they don't trust people to do their work under their own accountability? Is it because they have seen a drop off in productivity? Or is it because Japan doesn't like too much change and clings to the unknown or the unknown? There are certainly big barks tied up in real estate costs, especially here in Tokyo. I can easily imagine companies looking at that expense in their P&L and thinking, we could really hack into that cost and use the money somewhere else more productively. The first time ever, my landlord didn't increase my rent at lease agreement renewal time. They must be really hurting to agree to no increase because normally they are merciless. I drive around the middle of Tokyo and I look at all these new skyscrapers being completed and I ask myself, where are the tenants going to come from? I interpret all of this to mean that there will continue to be lots of pressure to on landlords into the future and hopefully will assist me in my rent negotiations. I recently completed my performance reviews of my staff and took the opportunity to ask them about remote work and what they wanted to do. Nobody said so they wanted to go back to working five days a week in the office and the preference range was from zero to three days a week. Why would I need them for five days a week? Salespeople were never required to be in the office every day prior to COVID. I always told them I expected them to be in the buyer's office, not ours. As COVID relents, we will probably have a combination of buyer face-to-face meetings and face-to-screen meetings as the medium for sales. The training team should be training people, so they will either be doing that online in the client's quarters or in our training rooms. Their schedules will enable them to work out for themselves where they need to be. 
The marketing team can do everything they need to do remotely for the most part. The one issue is that with no face-to-face -face time with anyone in the organization, it may not be the best idea for them from a teamwork point of view. Marketing and sales need to work well together, so they will no doubt need to have some regular interaction in person. Does that need to be five days a week? I wouldn't think that was the case. The admin team, out of everyone, probably should be in the office every day. We need the face of the company to be there for visitors and for picking up deliveries. Our training rooms are right next to the office, so they also need to keep an eye on them as well, making sure they are ship shape and uh, ready to go for our clients. Find out more. We come back from the break. Our show today is brought to you by our public programs, but we also do custom-made in-house classes. Now, we do them in our super safe classroom. We do them live online, and we do them in Japanese, and we do them in English. Okay, today's show is being brought to you by, on the 14th of October, we're doing our Winning With You Leadership Selling Program. This is great. Wholesale cycle gets covered. But in addition to that, we're really looking at how to build the trust, build the human relations with the buyer, because ultimately we're not here for a sale. We're here for the reorder. To get the reorder requires a lot of trust and a good track record and good relationship with the buyer. So that's what that course is really focused on. In addition, of course, to all the technical elements of the, of the sales cycle. On the 22nd of October, we're doing our Dale County course. That's our flagship program. Great program for changing mindset. And often this is one of the most difficult things to do. But changing mindset, uh, reorienting ourselves towards having a more positive outlook, setting goals, uh, being someone who is taking accountability for their future, living an intentional life, deals with leadership, deals with people skills, deals with stress management skills. And uh, these, you know, these things are critical in business and uh, we have to be on top of those completely. On the 2nd of November, we're doing our High Impact Presentations course. Two instructors, two days, everything videoed, amazing, amazing amounts of personal feedback, one-on-one -on -one feedback, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Unbeatable combination for that one. Our website is www dale d-a-l-e hyphen carnegie c-a-r-n-e-g-i-e dot c-o dot j-p you can email me at greg dot story at dalecarnegie.com if you like learning by watching videos then we have over a thousand for you there at tokyo japan dale carnegie tv on youtube get my best-selling books japan sales mastery the bible for selling in japan and Japan Business Mastery, as well as my new book, Japan Presentations Mastery. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's a premier business show in Japan, it comes out Mondays. Fridays, we have Japan Business Mastery Show. Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews, where I interview leaders in Japan from SMEs all the way up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic, leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Television Show. Don't forget, you can email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. Welcome back. What about me? As the president, do I need to be there every day? I used to be there five days a week, and now I'm almost exclusively at home. Do I need to lead the charge back into the office? I think my wife would be happier if I wasn't hanging around at home crimping her style. The interesting thing is, like most people, I've changed my lifestyle over these last couple of years. I don't lead a nine to six life anymore. The day has been fudged where I work early and work late, fitting in exercise where it's doable. I think I'm actually working much longer hours than before COVID. I think this is the experience of a lot of people. I find I get into a routine and it's not that easy to break it. 
and I'm sure no one is missing the morning commute to work on packed Tokyo trains. Flex time may be one of the additions to make going back in the office a bit easier so that the rush hour can be circumvented. Why do we need to start at 9am? Teamwork is always a concern for the leader. Are we able to sustain good teamwork with very little in-person activity? Have we seen a drop-off in teamwork over these last few years? I would say no. But is that a guarantee? That is how things will work out as we move beyond COVID? What if my competitors are doing better with their teamwork and productivity because they went back to the office? If it is everyone back to the office five days a week, will staff depart to join competitors who don't require it? Will flexible companies win over inflexible organizations? What happens when we all start adding in new people? We had a very strong culture build before COVID, and we kept it going by just moving it online. Every day, we do the daily deal and go through our vision, mission, values, etc. In short, we focus on our why. Takes about 15 minutes, and we didn't get everyone attending when we were doing it in the office before, and so the online attendance is about the same. Can this strong culture keep going, or do we need to strengthen it further by getting together more often? We've been doing all-hands meetings every month to provide an opportunity for the team to meet each other face-to-face, and it's been very successful. My conclusion is I have no idea what we should do. How about that for decisive leadership? We're not quite out of COVID just yet, but we are getting very close. When the numbers come right down, we will have a situation where it is safer to return to the office, and that is when some determinations will need to be made. What I do know is that this is a sensitive issue which must be carefully considered, and flexibility is an absolute necessity. In the meantime, the 100 flowers are continuing to bloom. Thank you for joining the Leadership Japan series. If you found the program useful, then share it with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Take what you found valuable. Immediately put into action because idea application is what makes winners winners. Be one of them. Remember, I'm your corporate coaching and training guy in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon. Nippon.